Okay, so you'll notice that our centrifugal fire pump here is kind of your, your standard factory curve that is the limits of NFPA 20. And there's three distinct points on it. All right, so the first is shut off. It's also known as churn. If the pump is operating at rated speed and no flow, and the total head of the centrifugal fire pump must be between 100 and 140% of the rated pressure at 100% flow. All right, so this is our rated pressure over here. We can see the churn has to somewhere between the 140 and 100%. And then the rated, the rated points, the second point, is the curve should pass through this point. It's basically what the factory gives you. It's what, it's what the factory is rates the pump at. And then we have the overload, which is the pump operating at 150% its flow. It's over here. Um, the total head pressure should not be less than 65. So it would have to be somewhere between 65 and it's rated. Um, you know, depending on the impeller of the pump, you could get different curves. So this is kind of your, your standard curve. You know, the test might ask you something like a pump set to the limits of NFPA 20, and then you would know that you would have to use this curve here with the churn being at 140 and the overflow being at 65. But you could also have pumps that are flatter, right? So this is an example of a flatter pump. You know, the churn is just barely above the rate of pressure and then it, it just slowly tapers off. All right, so as we just said, the impellers can be designed for flat, medium, or steep head discharge characteristics. Um, so there's a lot of questions going on. Um, I'm gonna stay on after the class to ask to answer the question, so if I don't get to it right away, just stick around and ask, and then we'll, we'll start going through them. Um, <clears throat> so basically, you know, if, if you took the eye of the diameter, right, a bigger eye is means you're gonna have more GPM than a smaller eye, right? You see smaller eye, larger eye. This is right from your NFPA handbook. It's figure 15.68. If you have wider impellers, um, you, get a, you get a flatter curve as opposed to a narrow one has a steeper curve. If there's more veins, you have a flatter curve, all right? And then if you have a bigger angle in the impeller, then you have a flatter curve, all right? So, so you might have some question like this on the exam where it's just asking you if you increase the eye of an impeller, would you expect more flow rate, less flow rate, something else? And, and if, you, if, you knew where this, if you knew where this was, you could easily answer that you would expect more, more flow rate. <laughs> All right, so the listed horizontal and vertical fire pumps are available with rated capacities from 25 to 5,000 GPM. The fire pump is recommended by NFPA 20 to be sized um, so that the demand falls between 90 and 140% of the pump capacity. Um, but NFPA 20 actually allows you to go up to a, all the way up to 150% of the rated capacity. So just doing a quick example. Um, the example says, select the minimum sized fire pump to supply a sprinkler flow rate of 120 GPM. All right. So, so I deal with a lot of plumbers that kind of dabble in fire protection and I, I know they don't really do a whole lot of fire protection when they see this number and they immediately think they've got to bump up to 750 GPM when the reality is they don't even really need to use a 500 GPM pump. So let's say, let's see if we get by with a 300 GPM pump, right? 300 GPM times 1.5 equals a flow rate of 5, 450. So a 300 GPM pump would be too small. So I'm going to bump up to the next size. 400 GPM times 1.5 equals 600 GPM. So I know I could, I could satisfy this flow with a 400 GPM pump because 400 times 1.5 is, is higher than the 520 GPM. All right, net positive suction head is the pressure head that causes the liquid to flow through the suction pipe and fitting into the eye of the repeller. NFPA 20 does not allow pumps to take suction under lift. The capacity and pressure ratings of fire pumps must be adequate to meet the flow and pressure demands consistent with the water supply requirements of the protected property. All right. And then 
the total head of the pump is the energy imparted to the liquid as it passes through the pump is expressed as either PSI or feet. And the total head is calculated by subtracting the energy in incoming liquid from the energy in the discharging liquid. All right, so, so here, here is just to put that into something that actually makes sense. Here's our pump. We're saying at the suction, we have some amount of head, right? And then it, the pump adds pressure to the system. So at the discharge, we have obviously more pressure. And then the difference between the discharge pressure and the suction pressure is the total head.